name is Evelyn Smith. I'm the director of Middle for here in Letterkenny University Hospital. I want to congratulate you on your pregnancy and I'm delighted that you've chosen Letterkenny to have your baby. This is a virtual tour of the unit and we'll show you some of the services and the personnel that you will meet while you're here. Hello, my name is Geraldine Hanley. I'm one of the clinical midwife managers here in Letterkenny Maternity Unit. Congratulations on your pregnancy and we are delighted to be able to show you around our unit and what it has to offer. If you present to Letterkenny Hospital during the daytime, the main entrance is the access route from 8am in the morning until 10pm at night. The door will be locked at 10pm at night and the entrance to the hospital then, including the maternity unit, will be via the emergency department. When you arrive at the main entrance of the hospital, Maternity is located on floor B or level 1 if using the lift. When you arrive at floor B at the maternity unit door, please use the busser. The doors will automatically be opened from inside the unit. When you arrive inside the maternity unit, please make your way down towards the reception desk. A member of staff will guide you to have a seat outside the admission room. At the reception desk, there is a member of staff on a 24-hour basis, so if you ever need to seek advice, please feel free to phone. In the admission room, the midwife will perform your first initial assessment. Hello, my name is Donna and this is the admission room. If you need to be assessed in your pregnancy or if you're in labour, you come in here. This is the CTG and that's the scanner there. If after your first assessment, you are in established labour, we will guide you and your birthing partner to the birthing suite. Welcome to the maternity unit in Letterkenny University Hospital. This is our birthing unit. We have four birthing rooms, all of similar design, and this is the space that you and your partner will spend your labour uh, time here. Um, in the unit, all the rooms have a specific labour bed uh, which is used for, during the duration of the labour when the ladies aren't mobilising. Um, we have a CTG machine which is a cardiotocograph monitoring to monitor baby's heartbeat uh, at intermittently or continuously. We also have um, a little Doppler, fetal Doppler to monitor the baby's heartbeat. In the room we also have a very important piece of equipment called the resuscitator and this equipment is used should your baby need any assistance after the birth. We promote a natural approach to labour and birth so the midwife caring for you will encourage you and assist you to use different positions for birthing, leaning forward positions including the use of the birthing ball. We also encourage breathing and relaxation techniques and hypnobirthing techniques. Should you need anything stronger for pain relief, the midwife will discuss your options with you. We have available gas and air, known as Entinox, or Pethidine, or an epidural service. Should a cesarean section be deemed necessary by medical staff at any stage, then your midwife will transfer you to theatre. Approximately one hour after birth, you will be transferred to the postnatal ward with your baby. You will remain in the postnatal ward for one to three days. In the postnatal ward, a midwife will help you care for your baby. At Letterkenny Maternity Unit, we promote, support and protect breastfeeding. Should your baby need any additional care, we have the facility of the neonatal unit on the maternity floor. Hello, my name is Amanda. Welcome to the neonatal unit. You are here because your baby has been born early or because they are a little bit unwell after birth. When you come into the unit, everybody is asked to wash their hands. Hi, my name is Reshmi. When your baby comes into the neonatal unit, if the baby is sick or premature, will be kept in an incubator and connected to a monitor for the monitoring purpose. When your GP confirms your pregnancy, they will refer you to the hospital. You will have a dating scan here in fetal assessment. 
Hello, my name is Geraldine. I'm one of the clinical midwife specialists for fetal assessment. Uh, this is our veterinary here up in floor B, the gynae ward. And I'm just going to bring you in now and show you one of the scan rooms. So this is Tina, one of our clinical midwife specialists as well. And this is our scan room. Following your fetal assessment scan, you will be referred to the antenatal clinic for your booking visit. Your antenatal classes will be discussed with you at your booking visit and booked accordingly. Having a baby is a very exciting time and is also a very big life-changing event. The antenatal education department at Letterkenny Maternity Unit offer a wide range of antenatal education classes including hypnobirthing techniques. These classes help to empower parents to make informed decisions based on the best available evidence and we are privileged to be part of your pregnancy birthing journey. At Letter Kenny Maternity Unit we work as part of a multidisciplinary team. Hello I'm Dr Matt McKernan, consultant obstetrician here. Congratulations on your pregnancy and we hope you have a great experience while you're with the team. Other services available to you include specialist diabetic services for pregnancy, bereavement services, perinatal mental health services and lactation services. We hope you enjoyed our virtual tour of the maternity unit. Enjoy your pregnancy and we look forward to seeing you.
COVID-19 or coronavirus is here, so it's important to have the correct information at hand, like knowing the symptoms, a high temperature, a cough, shortness of breath or breathing difficulties. If you have symptoms, self-isolate to protect others and phone your GP. Visit hse.ie for updated factual information and advice, or give us a call. Protection from coronavirus, it's in our hands. Gestational diabetes is one of the most common health problems that can happen during pregnancy. It affects as many as 12% of pregnancies in Ireland and can lead to serious problems for both mum and baby. Certain women are at higher risk of developing gestational diabetes. For example, if you are overweight, if you have a family member with diabetes, if you had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy or depending on your ethnic background. If you are at risk, you will receive a blood test for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. If you are diagnosed, there are day-to-day -day changes you can make to stay healthy. How much exercise you get and what kind of food you eat can have important effects on your health and your baby's health. But what happens when you have gestational diabetes and how can diet and exercise help? Food and drinks are broken down in your digestive system. The sugar they contain is absorbed into your bloodstream. But sugar needs insulin to work. Insulin is made by the pancreas and helps sugar get into your cells. Insulin acts like a key that lets the sugar move from the bloodstream into the cells of your body where it is used for energy. Pregnancy hormones change the way insulin works in your body. In the later stages of pregnancy, these changes make it difficult for insulin to unlock the cells and allow the sugar to enter. This is what is known as insulin resistance. Some insulin resistance is normal in pregnancy, but this means that your pancreas needs to work extra hard to keep blood sugar levels in a healthy range. When you have gestational diabetes, your pancreas is not able to keep up. As a result, too much sugar is left in the blood. However, a carefully planned diet with high fibre carbohydrates and no added sugar can make it easier for your body to manage the sugar in your blood. Exercise will also help keep blood sugar low as it improves insulin's ability to unlock the cells and uses up sugar for energy. If blood sugar is controlled, your chances of a healthy pregnancy are the same as a non-diabetic mum. This makes diet and exercise powerful tools for a healthy pregnancy. However, if blood sugar is not well controlled, this can lead to problems in both mum and baby. 
In a study of 23,000 pregnant women around the world, researchers found a link between high blood sugar in mum and babies that had grown too big. Researchers also found a link between high blood sugar and preeclampsia, premature delivery, need for caesarean section, birth injury and abnormal sugar control in baby. Diabetes during pregnancy can also put you and your baby at risk for problems later in life, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But there are actions you can take. Changes in diet and exercise, combined with close monitoring, can successfully manage blood sugar in 7 out of 10 pregnancies. So no better time to start than now. To learn more about Irish research on maternal and newborn health, you can visit the HRB Mother and Baby Clinical Trial Network's website.
is Sinead Thompson and I'm a community midwife at the National Maternity Hospital. I designed and created Labour Hopscotch in 2015 in response to an increase in the epidural rates and also in medical interventions during labour and birth. The principle of Labour Hopscotch is to encourage optimal fetal positioning. This means having your baby's head in the optimum position lined up so it can descend into the pelvis in the optimum position for labour. When this happens, it triggers the spontaneous onset of labour. When women go into spontaneous labour, it's less likely that they'll need induction and that means that there'll hopefully be less intervention in their births. The Labour Hopscotch Framework aims to support and promote natural and active labour. It is encouraged for all women, regardless of the care pathway that they choose for their birth, but encourages more natural methods of pain relief where possible for as long as possible in labour. Using the idea of the game hopscotch we all played years ago, each of the steps can be undertaken in, to remain active during labour. The process can start at home, beginning at the bottom of the hopscotch board when you're more active and mobile. The bottom square of the labour hopscotch is called the mobilised square and it aims at promoting optimal fetal position. There are four activities associated with this step and it's important that these four positions are practised throughout the antenatal period in preparation for your labour. Your midwife will explain the positions to you during your pregnancy. Our research findings, which we published in 2019 in our research study, showed that women who practice labour hopscotch had reduced epidural rates, reduced the caesarean section rates, increased spontaneous onset of labour and vaginal deliveries, and most of all, there was an increase in birth satisfaction rates. Having a positive birthing experience makes a smoother transition to parenthood.
nature has been researching your milk for hundreds of millions of years. The composition of your milk is alive and changes throughout the day, the night, the months and the years to meet your child's needs. Your milk contains stem cells. These are cells that create and repair the body and are being researched worldwide to cure conditions like Alzheimer's and diabetes. Your milk contains components that kill cancerous cells. Your body identifies bacteria and viruses found in your baby's body and environment. You then produce antibodies specifically tailored to those infections and deliver them to your child through your milk. Your milk appears to switch on a gene in your baby's body which produces a hormone called leptin. This hormone tells your baby when his tummy is full, protecting him against overeating. Your milk contains oxytocin, a hormone that induces relaxation and feelings of well-being in your child and in you. It's all in you. Human milk, tailor-made for tiny humans. Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the genital area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimize the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tapes, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retape the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally, a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk.
you put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow resting on your hip. Now, I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm going to come back onto my mat and I'm going to lie the baby back down and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads, so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm, underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now, you see, there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported with my arm here on the left, and I've got a good grip of the baby. Now, nice and gently, you're going to let the baby into the bath. If the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now, you see, I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. So you settle them down, give them a little cuddle, settle them down, and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here, so get right in there under the chin, because if you leave areas wet, they're going to get red and sore. They are all get right onto the armpit here, where they're all they're like that. And another area is get right onto the behind the knees and in the groin area. There are areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. So you make sure that you dry those areas off very well.